Hello everyone. Part two. This demonstration is going to be of me showing you how to draw this hair. You're going to get the choice between drawing a hair or a bird and it's your choice completely as to what you choose. Okay, position, um, how close up, etc. Okay, so you don't have to go. These are just two that I've got from the internet. Okay, but you, you're going to choose yourself. Now, why? Why are we drawing these two animals? Um, what the other class are working on just now, and I'm, we're going to go back to, is looking at artists, okay, printmakers in particular, because this, this printmaking unit, your final outcome is going to be, it's going to consist of, or be composed of, a landscape, an animal, be it a hare or a bird, and a tree. It's likely we'll get the, the tree done and the landscape done when we're back in school. Okay, but for just now, I would like you to be working at home on the animal. Okay, so this is an artist called Ian McCulloch. And he is a fantastic um, wood print cutter, wood cut printer. Um, and we'll be doing something very similar to that. And there's this lady here called Angela Harding. She's got, she sells a lot of cards and prints. There's some in the Castle Gallery. Um, just now and um, that's why we've chosen these two particular animals because these artists concentrate on them okay so back to the demonstration as I said I'm going to show you how to start drawing um, this hair uh, I'm not going to do the one of the bird because it's just going to take far too long okay so I've printed it out um, ideally, I would have had this on my mobile phone sitting next to me, but I'm using that to record, so I can't do that. So that's why I've printed it. You don't need to print it out, though, um, everyone. I'm going to be using a, two, a 4B or, or a 2B pencil just for videoing purposes so that you can see on the page, because it's if I use an HB, it might come out too light. On that note, what I would really like you to do is use a pencil that... Um, is light to start with. That is absolutely key. You do not want to be pressing really, really hard. And I'll show you that just now. If I press really hard with my pencil and then I go and try and rub that out, it'll always be there. So when I try to rub that out, and I have tried quite well, you can still see it. So please, folks, start off with a very, very light... Where's my camera? <laughs> A very, very light weight of line when you're doing this. Okay, now I snapped my pencil a wee bit when I was doing that. That's okay. Okay, so the structure of the hair. What you need to do, first of all, is establish the simple, simple shapes that you see. And they're very, very simple in this case, which is a circle. So I'm going to draw the main body of the hair. And you can see I'm going round and round in circles, but not putting my pencil on the paper. So that's a good starting point. And you just very, very gently put the pencil down and start to look at the simple shapes that you can see. Scale is going to be key, so you're going to have to try, you might have to wiggle about with that wee bit. And don't obsess too much about that just now. Just try and establish the simple shapes. So the back of the rabbit's foot, sorry, hair. <laughs> Just probably going to end up calling it a rabbit the whole time. And one foot, the other foot, and the ears are going to be key to this being a rabbit. I uh, sorry, a hare and not a rabbit. <laughs> so can you see it's starting to look like it could be a hare, although it's made up of lots of lots, lots and lots of different simple, simple shapes. Circles, ovals. Okay, so I'm going to just lift that up to the camera. We'll move it about. Not, it's like a cartoon here at the moment, but that's okay. I have established the structure and where it is in relation to the format of the paper. Um, so I'm just going to put its tail and okay. I'm oh, legs, this four leg, it's more like a rectangle. Okay, 
Okay, I'm quite happy with that as a starting point. Next steps. I'm going to start with the head. And what I want to do is establish where the eye is, where the eyes are in relation to each other. Now you can see in the picture, they're pretty straight. If I draw a wee guideline on the actual picture, you, you can do this if you've got a picture or if you've got a photograph printed. If you've got your phone, obviously you can't do that. But you could put your pencil in like so and just use that as a guide. So I know that these are quite straight. So I'm just going to draw that wee guideline in. So already I can see that I've gone a wee bit high there. So I'm just going to take that out and just pop it a wee bit lower. So the shape of the eye is not quite circular. And I'm starting to press a wee bit harder with my pencil to establish the outline. Probably pressing a wee bit too hard here. I would still keep the pencil marks light. He looks quite vicious. But I don't think he's probably that. Vicious looking in reality, quite cute. And then you can't see the, the other eye because it's tucked round and I'm just going to go around the outside like so. And okay, I'm quite satisfied with that. I'm quite happy with that. Where is the eye in relation to the, the head? Let's start to draw that in now. So I'm going to go down the bridge of the nose. And actually what I'm going to do is just check an angle. So put my pencil on the edge of the hair's nose and I'm a wee bit out there. So I'm just going to change that angle. And this is pretty much how I do any drawings that I would be copying from a photograph. I establish the simple shapes and then next steps would be to work on the detail but use my pencil to check out angles like so. Okay. Round the bridge of the eye up the uh, top of the head. And I'm going to come round to this side. You can also do measurements. Now, I've gone a little bit bigger. You can use your pencil to measure. If any of you, not sure if we did this in second, first or second year, but you can actually measure. You know, I could measure the distance between these two eyes and take it over and make a mark. And I know I've gone a little bit bigger than the actual photograph, but that's okay. So I'm going to dot about a wee bit here, folks, um, just trying to get the the face established. I think as soon as I've got the, the kind of the, the head and the face established, then everything else should fit into place because it almost gives them, gives them the character. Around the cheek, there's a, wee line, there's a wee line that comes down there and that establishes the side of his cheek. All the time I am looking back at the image, the photograph. In fact, I think I'm probably looking at the photograph more than I am looking at my drawing. Now, this is something we definitely would have all done in, well, hopefully, in um, first or second year. Is a little bit of what we used to call blind drawing, where I would get you to look at the whatever it was you were drawing, person, thing, and not your paper. And that is a really good, fun um, and we probably will could try that in, when we're back in class. Gosh, that ear looks a wee bit big, but that's okay. Um, it, it gets you to really, really look at the subject closely. Because if you, a lot of, a, a big mistake quite a lot of you will make is that you will glance at the thing that you're looking at and then you'll have it, you think you've, you can remember it and then you just draw from memory. But you have to keep looking back all the time and reassessing the actual object, the actual subject that you are drawing. Okay. Now, other art teachers in the department will demonstrate this in a different way. We all have our own methods, we all have our own style, quite different, very different in fact. Um, so this really is my way. <laughs> And as you're my pupils, as you lot are my pupils, you learn my way. You will eventually find your own style. Okay, so don't for one second think that this way is the way that I want you to be working all the time. 
but it's just a good method to get you started. Okay. Now already I think I'm, oh, I'm quite a bit bigger. If I just do a measurement like so, see how much bigger I've gone than the photo. But I'm not, I'm not too bothered about that. I just think I might run out of paper. So I am, um, as you could, as you saw in the last video, the techniques. Um, I I had my port paper portrait. And it's much, much easier when you're putting videos up, especially now I've started putting them up onto YouTube. Um, it's much better it's in landscape format, as my husband pointed out to me when he was doing his videos for his pupils at Melbourne. Um, it's just it's just an easier format. All videos are, are landscape format. Okay. So I think I am going to definitely run out of space here, but that's okay. So coming around the body, so I've got a really good arch onto... Um, Mr. Hare here, or Mrs. Hare, whatever. I'm just going to get that hunch. I'm conscious of time, and I don't really want to go on too long, but I think you'll probably be able to get the gist of how to start drawing. Now, how to, the drawing um, the hair, and you can apply the same to the bird, okay? Um, so on that note, what I would like you all to do is... Pick a hare or a rabbit. It doesn't have to just be a hare. I've just chosen a hare because Angela Harding, the printmaker that you're going to be studying, and um, Ian McCulloch, they both have hares in their work. That looks a wee bit weird, but anyway, let's carry on. Um, can you see that? Yeah. And uh, just you find one that you think you're capable of drawing and that you like. That's really important. I like this wee guy, so that's why I've chosen him. Or girl. That's why I've chosen him. Um, the bird as well. Um, I'll come and just bring that in in a minute. Um, so anyway, I'm starting to get a wee bit um, lost because I am chatting at the same time. It is quite difficult to talk and draw at the same time. I'll be honest with you. That's why I like silence in class when we're drawing. Not complete silence, but okay, I'm open. Okay with that. That foot's a wee bit weird, but anyway. He looks like he's kind of leaning forward. I think he's got too much of a hunch, but as a starting point, I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay. Okay, it's just a closer view. Now, from this point, you can then take your techniques and grab, which I just quickly gone and grabbed out my folder. So we did these last time. Some of you have done this, done them and sent them in. Thank you very much. Um, quite a lot of you didn't, but um, I would still like to see you having a practice of this, please, for last week's task. So I can now take some of these and start to apply them to the texture of the rabbit to give him or her hair <laughs> form, okay? Three-dimensionality, because that's why we I showed you these shading techniques. We want to try and establish this dude in a kind of three-dimensional way and that's how we can use some of these already I can see that I can use some of the I could use some of this linear masking I could use some curved cross hatching I could use some graduated I could use the scissors and scraping um, I could eventually go around and use get on to doing a bit of frottage but I don't want to over complicate it okay so I would, again, what I would do is I'd start in the eye. Now, I know I might bring the camera down a wee bit closer. Okay, so a wee bit closer. Hopefully my pencil will not, not be so close that you can't, can't record it. And this is the technique. What I want to try and do in here is establish the fluffiness of the fur. So I would be using a technique that is something a bit like this. So you're doing lots of little dashes. And I'm not I'm not going to go in and do a, a solid filling in. I'm just going to, all the time, I'm going to be using this technique to give it that lovely texture of fur. Now if I go in too dark, I can use my rubber, my putty rubber to take away. I can press a bit harder to get darker. I can press lighter. Um, I could also go in with the scissors and the scraping to establish an overall tone. I quite like just getting the texture down immediately. I'll leave that wee bit there because it's quite... And what's really important, if you're noticing, is the direction of the mark that I'm making. Can you see that? I'm going in a direction that's trying to sculpt. I'm going to do a wee curve 
have the technique there. So it's actually sculpting and making the form of the rabbit really pop. Can you see that now? That's just a very basic start. If I thought that was getting a little bit dark, then I would come in with a wee bit of putty rubber and then just start to lift. Now, I know some of you won't have putty rubber, and as I said, blue tack does work. If you're in the supermarkets, then you might just want to have a look, first of all, for putty rubber, and then go on and have a look and see if you can get, or if you can't get putty rubber, get some blue tack. Okay. Now, the fur goes down. Kind of branches out a wee bit, and it's quite light. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to draw every single hair that you can see on this hair. Excuse the pun. But you want to establish texture and form. And that's why I asked you to do these techniques. There's a wee dark bit there. It's not going to press. A wee bit dark on my pencil. Okay, so I think, I think I'm going to stop there because this could go on for about an hour. And coming to that, regards time, how long should you spend on this? I am going to give you... If really, I'm going to, what would I give you? I'd like you to, to send me what you've done after a week. Some of you might get this finished within a week. You might spend like an afternoon doing this. Some of you might dot in and out and spend 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. I want you to enjoy it. And I don't want it to become a chore. And if you are having issues or struggles or with proportion, etc., then photograph it, if you can, photograph it quite nicely, quite well, so I can see it and send it to me and I can give you some, some feedback, okay? So I'm going to stop, otherwise I'm going to get carried away and spend the whole afternoon working on this and you're going to get bored, okay? So just a wee close-up, okay? There's a wee close-up of the original. Not bad. It's my character version of him, okay, or her, and see how you get on with that. Okay, folks. Yeah, we add on, because the last video was going on too long, so I've stopped it, and I'm going to just want to finish off by saying, um, adding the techniques. I never spoke about that at the end of the last video, and it's really going to be your choice as to what you want to add to make this look, or to make your um, hair or bird look. Uh, have texture and look um, have form okay so you look three dimensional so I could I mean let's just a quick demo and I'll just show you if I want to kind of get some quick tone into the back of the the hair then I might be just try the smudging technique um, and oh, I, I quite like I know other staff in the department are not so keen on this one um, but I quite like it to establish a quick a quick value a quick to um, tonal value so I've just scraped off the graphite and I'm just going to smudge that in, going in the direction that the fur, I'm not going to just smudge it round and round and round, oops, I'm going to take it round so that I am still thinking about the texture and the, the direction that the fur is moving in. It's quite dark round the, and I can already see I want to change some of the, the drawing that I've made, but that's okay, I could have done that first. That gives you immediately, that gives you a sense of um, value. A wee bit under there as well. Okay, I can go in and do a wee bit around the edge of the, the ear. See that? And there as well. And then obviously if you go over the edge, just take your rubber and take away some of the um, excess that you go outside. Then you could take, um, what I could do is do some texture into the surface of... Your rubber and just have a wee play with that, having a wee experiment with that and see what happens. That might, might be quite chunky, I'll just push it around and I quite like that. Or you could take the rubber, take the conventional rubber even and start to draw, draw with it. You have to have a really nice sharp end of a rubber. But can you see, you could start to apply some of the techniques um, and you could draw into that, obviously. 
with that technique I was using. Okay, so please think about applying the techniques, but don't do that until you've got a lot of the drawing established and you quite like it. If you want, you can get it to the just the linear stage and then you can send me a photo and I can give you some advice on it and then I can maybe give you some hints and tips as to which techniques to use. Okay, um, have fun with it though, enjoy it.